As a final video on decision trees, I want to give a sneak peek of a different algorithm class, Ensemble Methods. So far, we discussed using a single decision tree, or even just a single model for our classification or regression task. Ensemble methods, however, rely on a number of models. Those models can be of the same type or of different type, meaning that they can either be the same algorithm like a decision tree, or a mix of different ones. For the sneak peek, I will mainly focus on an ensemble method making use of a decision trees. A random forest. The name is only one part of why this algorithm is cool. As the name suggests, we are aiming at building a full forest instead of just growing a single tree. In the end, the more the merrier, right? Alright, let's look a bit more into detail how this works. As said, instead of creating one single tree, as we have talked about in our previous videos, we are now creating multiple trees. This can range from just a bunch of trees like 10 or 20, to a bigger number like 200, 500 or even more. The idea is that we create many smaller trees in contrast to a single large one. Small in this context means trees with small depth, which also means each of them generally has less rules. To create our forest, we want to avoid having the same shape of tree. After all, a forest filled with 500 trees that all look the same is rather boring. So how do we make sure that the trees are not just always the same? We talked about the splitting criteria, which seems to be deterministic. Well, instead of taking the full set of available features, we make use of a method called bootstrapping. With bootstrapping, we choose a random subset of our complete feature set. So, as an example, consider our dataset has 100 different features or attributes. Instead of building a tree based on all 100, we now always select 20 features at random. We then build a tree with a small depth using only those 20 features. The random sampling of features creates many different looking decision trees that all perform differently. How does this work when computing a prediction? Well, similar to the conception of being stronger together, the random forest algorithm creates a prediction using each and every single decision tree that is part of the forest. After that, the algorithm uses majority voting to make a final prediction. In practice, random forests usually work quite well and also generalize well to unseen data. The idea behind having multiple small decision trees based on a random subset of features also means that each of them might overfit a bit differently than the others. Taking all of them together provides a nice variety which ultimately should help for a better generalization. The algorithm comes with a number of parameters that you can tune, such as number of trees, depth of the trees, pruning strategies as mentioned in a previous video, and so on. And that's it already. As you see, random forests are quite a simple concept, while being very useful too. To sum up what we have learned in this module, we talked about two algorithm classes used for this supervised learning paradigm, regression and decision trees. For regression, we also covered some variations of the simpler linear regression, and for decision trees, we not only learned how to build our own tree, but how to grow an entire forest.